Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to talk about a subject which is pretty interesting to me, which is the idea of reducing bad background noise or room echo um, in post-production Adobe Premiere when you don't have necessarily an ideal mic or a room or a recording area specifically set up to get the perfect audio quality in the initial recording. So here I'll be showing you my current solution, which is going to get as close to improving your sound quality as you can get with pure hardware. Uh, yes, I'm aware that if I actually had a proper setup, which hopefully in a few months I'll be able to kind of get going, um, that you would get a better recording off the bat. But this is how you can fix it to make it as good as possible inside of Adobe Premiere post-production. And I'm sure you can do similar things inside of Audacity if you don't happen to be using Adobe Premiere. Audacity is an audio editing specific program. So in this setup right here, I have five different versions of the same clip. You can see that the first one has no special effects added to it and it sounds pretty bad. Um, but then I add more stuff as we go along in order to get a sound which I think is pretty decent, knocks away some of the room echo, the bad background white noise, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to play each clip and then explain what I'm doing in each one to add stuff to it, and I'll show you my setup at the end. Okay, so here is the audio clip with nothing added to it. Hello everybody, Chris here. So it sounds pretty echoey, I can clearly hear some white background noise, and that's not what we want. So the first thing I'm doing here in Adobe Premiere is uh, adding an effect called Dynamics Processing. It's an audio effect. Uh, we can take a look at my uh, setup for that. So basically what I did is I took everything that was lower than 40 decibels, and I basically just cut it right out because I know that my voice is uh, louder than that. So this is going to help by just cutting straight away anything that would be quiet but still audible in the background, and you can hear the difference here. Hello everybody, Chris here. So you can see that for what's important, my actual voice, what I'm trying to say, it doesn't really lose anything from there, but it cut out a tremendous amount of background noise. Now here I have a very similar effect applied. Uh, notice that it's not using the dynamics processing in addition to this, that's the next one. Um, but this just has adaptive noise reduction. So when it comes to adaptive noise reduction, I find that the higher you set noisiness, generally the better result you get. So you can do presets heavy noise reduction and follow that up with moving the noisiness bar all the way to 100. Uh, if you are talking quietly into the mic, I, d I don't know, you might need to set that a little bit lower, but that's what's working for me here. So you'll get a similar result to the previous effect, but I think that they work best in conjunction. But here's the sound with just adaptive noise reduction. Hello everybody, Chris here. So I think the most noticeable difference there is that at the first half a second, you can still hear some of that white background noise. But when I put those two effects on the audio clip together, it gets a little bit better. So here's the sound with both of these effects layered on top of each other. Hello everybody, Chris here. Now to me, almost all of the background noise has been eliminated. The echoey sense of it is lessened, but my voice still doesn't really sound, uh, I would say, full or complete. It still sounds a little weak. If my mouth was a bit closer to the microphone, maybe that would make it sound better. Or if I was using a better microphone in general. So to me, it sounds like all the background noise has been eliminated there, but that the voice is overall still a little bit weak. It doesn't have a lot of impact in it. So one more thing I've been experimenting with adding is a vocal enhancer. So the vocal enhancer has three modes. If I click custom setup, you can choose male, female, or music. And because I want to enhance my voice, obviously as a male voice, that's the setting I'm going to choose. And you'll hear how it makes it sound a little bit more impactful. Hello everybody, Chris here. So let me play that for you one more time. Hello everybody, Chris here. Now, it's not perfect if I had a better microphone that I was using here. I'm sure I could get a better result. But I think just layering a few of those Adobe Premiere audio effects over your original sound, you can take something that sounds relatively bad and make it, I would say, passable. You can be the judge of that. But let's go through the setup one more time. So with the adaptive noise reduction, uh, I try to pump the noisiness up pretty high. I, I guess here it's a little less than 100, but there's not too much difference there. So I can pump that to 100 if I want. All the other settings on heavy noise reduction seem to work fine. Dynamics processing. 
Uh, I find the point at which my voice is basically audible, and I try to cut off everything below that. You can see here I'm using a very, very steep slope, basically just a hard cutoff, and that's working for me all right. And then with the vocal enhancer, I'm setting it to the gender of the person speaking, which in this case is male. So in my experimentation, this has been about as close as you can get to taking audio, which may be a little bit echoey or have background noise, and making it sound better purely in post-production. So I hope that this tip video helped you guys out. I've been Chris. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in my future video content.